Hello everyone and welcome back. Before we get into our halftime show, I want to say again, happy Pride to everyone out there. Thank you to very dedicated members behind the scenes and on a broadcast for making every part of broadcast wonderful and reminder for everyone out there does not take anything to be kind and love one another. And of course, I want, do want to be giving out a shout out to Team Fish Taco in this as well to have yes. the most adorable stickers that they are selling. If you want to not just support the team, but actually just support it in general, 100% of the proceeds are going to the Trevor Project and Team Fish Taco matching 50% of that as well. They're so cute. Look so at them. <laughs> There's so I know we usually shill our own emotes, but today it's about this shill, okay? You know, shout out to Team Fish Talk for putting this together. Really, really cool. Uh, and it's such a unique way to, you know, embrace Pride Month. So really happy that one of the teams is stepping up and doing this. It's so good. I love the little the little Pride, pride flags in the taco shells. I wouldn't have never thought of that. So you can find out more at twitter.com slash Team Fish Taco. Go check that out. Go support. Now... Back to business for us over at our Rally Cry halftime show after a really insane first match. I know, Kangas, you had a word for that. Yeah, no, Maryville played it really freaking good. Really, really <laughs> yeah. freaking good. Yeah. That's, that's how they played that one. Right, Cubby? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll <laughs> go with that. Yeah, good job. <laughs> I do have on, this. I, I have, um, wait, 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 where is it? On, on command, here. Yeah, I, need a, I need a practice. Where was that before? Really good. There we go, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I feel, they, I feel like Genghis is bringing out some chaotic energy on this deck, <laughs> so I feel like this actually fits in perfectly to our next segment. So, do you, okay. do you guys know those alignment charts of like the chaotic evil and the lawful evil and oh, yeah. chaotic good? I thought it could be fun if we were to make one of those charts with our players from that last match. So, Ooh. I went ahead and did up a chart. I hope that this fits well oh, on Oh, this the looks amazing. Oh my oh. goodness. I did, oh. I did a good, I did oh, a good. Boy. Yeah, so, awesome. So we are going to go ahead and go put the players on the chart where they belong. Okay. Um, I gotta fix it first real fast. Because yeah, I no, broke, I got you, I got you here. I'll solve a little right bit of time after. for it. Production, if we could actually make this bigger on our screen so that way I can I can read all the names and such. I guess we can also just go off of the roster list. That, that's probably fine too. Thank you, thank you, production. All right. Yeah, that's a J. Uh, Tomio has to go in Chaotic Evil for that last one because the, the, <laughs> the IQ into everyone. <laughs> That was, right, uh, yeah. Whereabouts? Are we doing like a here the chaotic evil? Are we doing like a here? You know, like we're I, doing... okay. I would say I think we're more neutral off the chart. because of the fact that it was only one play. But it's the fact that it was the like really the only thing that the team really did on their own that wasn't reactive that made it so far chaotic. So I kind of won it over there. Right, right here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we don't look like you agree. Nope. This is this is just about it. Um, okay. All right, uh, Fake God, we're going to put you in Lawful Good. I know that you might have gotten blasted, uh, but Malphite is a good pick, and it's being okay. slept on, and it's a basic champ that I can play. So well, if we're going based on champ picks as well, I, I argue we should put Young then, like, right in the middle. Just kind of undecided, because th that was one right rise here. game, and we don't really we know no how idea. to rate it based on that one, so I, I feel I feel like that should be Young's right. position. Niles has to be chaotic good, because he that forward percentage would be filthy that game. That would be. On Renekton. But he you know, was the one death, so he, he has to be... Ooh. So it's still all the way up on chaotic, I think. Um, it was that but, death away from a perfect game, by the way. Whereabouts are we throwing Ooh. him? I think uh, in the middle of the top of chaotic good. That's where I would put it. Right, like yeah, 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 like like right over the O on chaotic. That's that's where I would. His add. head is the new O. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, how about yeah. how about get back the LeBlanc that built Static Shiv and just roamed is I think the most uh, you know readable thing in the entire game right now. You expect a LeBlanc to build this item, you expect her to push a wave and then roam. So I'm gonna say lawful good. It's actually like the most vanilla thing that you can be doing right now. Uh, because it's so easy to read. That, that's yeah. my reasoning. But it's absolutely busted. So, you know. <laughs> it is also really 
evil, so maybe it <laughs> should be down there. Hmm. Okay, lawful evil. Like How about a, that? A lawful it's evil? lawful because we we can predict it, but it is still evil. Do you want it more so like along the line, or like still like kind of like yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty. Well, he's all there. the way evil, so throw you, him all the way over there. Honestly, oh, get yeah. back, get back's evil. So we're just gonna he point it. That's yeah. Love you. Kind of poke him up a little bit towards the chaotic, or like nah. Yeah, you're he kind pointed, of talking about it. He him. pointed it and got $2 billion for himself, you know? But, like, again, he did the thing that you expect a LeBlanc shiv to do. So, I don't know if I'd say chaotic necessarily. Right, well, but, we'll you know, back and, and you just drop more every half. I think that it's it's fine. Right, right um, here is where he'll live. Let's go Zyko. Well, I feel like I, bot lane really didn't do too much in that last game. Hmm... Uh, let's not do Zyko. Let's let's come back to Zyko. Yeah, you, you gotta come back. You gotta think on this I'm one. Gonna, a little I'm bit. gonna go. Auto Orange gets lawful good because he just did his job, and it was good. He played the Sejuani. Here we go. We got a yeah. really good. That actually yeah, makes a was, lot of it sense. It was pretty to me. good. Yeah. I think Scary rules. Jerry could also go on there, right? Because he he just like did played back. He didn't go forward. He didn't do the crazy Scary Jerry thing that we've seen in a couple yeah. of games where he then he gets picked but off and died. He actually played very clean. It's also Scary Jerry, so we're going to need to put him on the border of Lawful and Chaotic. Okay. we yeah, never yeah, know which not, side not, he's going to be on. Not all the way Lawful, but I still think good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Right we here. don't know. Yeah, we never know Just where he's going to be. Just in case. Just in case. We never know where he's going to be. Um, he's Schrodinger's Jerry. <laughs> Uh, okay. So we got Meech, Zazel, and Zyko here. I know Zyko, it's... you guys are wanting to come back to. I feel like too, like once we finish this, you might have to go back and kind of reflect on where everyone is. Yeah, I suppose. Meech, for me, gets chaotic evil because we we blinded Kaisa when Aphelios was up. <laughs> it's not. I, I think playing Kaisa when Aphelios is up is, is bad. So chaotic, not not lawful. A little bit oh, yeah. chaotic evil. I can't read, chaotic sorry. Evil. Yeah, <laughs> I agree I, with that. For me, that's a bit of an ego pick. It's going to be honest. <laughs> Straight into chaotic Which evil I respect. that one. I, I do respect it. Don't get me wrong. It's Except good later. One. But you get blasted early. And yeah, they, they got blasted now, early. The problem with these last two is that this game was so determined by the top half of the map and really not as much about the bottom half. So it's like... Realistically, where do we rate the supports based on that game? I almost feel like both should just go lawful good because they both just tried their best. <laughs> I feel like in general, supports are always on like the lawful end of it, except for anyone who's playing a Yumi, which of course we all know where that's going to go. But uh, I, I will say for Zyko, it, okay. he was on the map quite often. He was actually fought, linking up with Odd Orange and getting out there uh, uh, quite a few times, especially into the mid lane to try and assist with get back. So maybe Zyko, we could put definitely gonna be good. Uh, I don't know if I have it chaotic or lawful. I feel like maybe in the middle with Scary you, Jerry, like we could just kind of put, you know, they're, they're lane duo, so they can just be side by side. It's true, perfect, a perfect uh, pairing. Zazel is lawful good because Zazel is just, he's Zazel. It's just always lawful good. Yeah, just Zazel always. could never be anything but lawful good. Yeah, really. It's the script. The script. I feel yeah. like we have so many people here over on the good side and not on the evil. Is there anything? Because we do have a minute or two alone before. down there, man. <laughs> I know. In the, lawful, in the lawful evil, we have a minute or two it's before be draft. In. Anyone that you put on here earlier, is there anyone you're now kind of reconsidering to, to, because, like, he threw so many people in the good side? Odd Orange Maybe. and Lawful Evil because he doesn't want to go to LCS. Boom. No. That's it. Uh, Niles, <laughs> Niles is Chaotic Evil because of the dirty farming. Even if uh, it was good. Ah, yes. And, and he threw the perfect game. You know, the one death, which was a good play. Oh, that I'm is in. true. I'm yeah. in. If we're revising the script just to make it spicy, I like Send this. him down the river. Send him <laughs> down to the Chaotic Evil land. And then anyone... Get still alone. Nobody's Chaotic good fully. Yeah, there's there's just Scary Jerry and Zyko just kind of there. Do we? No, because you said Scary Jerry was pretty lawful good, right? We never so, know if he's going to be good or good or, or chaotic or lawful. You know, it's just he's got to be on the edge. We well, yeah, move Psycho this up. Psycho's game too he was kind. lawful, but in like, general he's chaotic. So that's why that, we're not committing. I, yet. I don't trust Psycho. He's too kind. Put him in chaotic. Is this just like a humbling attempt? Like, what are you? What are you doing? I'm just trying to make things balanced. You know? Yeah, yeah. This is an intervention for half the players, really. It inter okay, okay. I think well, we're the ones who need an intervention, actually. Yeah, I think right? so, yeah. You guys yeah. would both go, like, right over here. You know, with Tomio, Meech, and Niles. Oh, oh, yeah, you don't have PNGs of us. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. We're coming to Lawful Evil, at least. Yeah, Back actually. Yeah. What? I think Cubby, Lawful Evil. Own it, Cubby, you Angus, know. Angus, Chaotic Evil, and I think that would be good, you know? <laughs> I think that'd be 
be good. I, I think it'd be well, good. Where would Sierra go, though? I don't know. Maybe we'll middle. have to figure out after the game. <laughs> yeah, that'll be that'll be for a different time. But uh, good job rating our players there. You guys were pretty on the same page about a lot of things. So I'm pretty yeah. surprised about that one. I'm not going to lie. Good stuff there. And hopefully we get some good stuff coming out from our teams, no matter where they are on the alignment chart in this game to see if Maryville University can take that to our drops ready. Our game's ready. I'll see you two after. Thank you, Sierra. And uh, little does she know, me and Kelby have perfect synergy as demonstrated by this perfect fist bump we're about to do while maintaining eye contact with the camera. You ready, Kelby? Three, two, one. Oh, we were close. That was actually kind of close. Not bad. All right. There. I also we'll, want to we'll cross my body, it. which you should never do. But, you know, I freaked out. So, yeah, my bad. I put you on the spot. It's all right. All right. Disguised on the blue side. Locking away the Ari, locking away the Vi. Now tied with MU in their win percentage. Both of these teams, six and seven, going into this game. Number two. Maryville continue to impress, continue to surprise. I'm curious what the first pick's going to be here for Disguise. Again, so many OP junglers that are on this patch. Uh, as they take away the Nico themselves, and that tells me maybe more priority coming in on the Aphelios. I think that was a big part of the success that Maryville had in the last game. But also, on this patch, we've, we've been seeing a lot of our teams here in Challengers actually lock the top side first uh, so yeah. far. I don't know if that was just a Supernova thing early on, uh, but Maryville also 1-3-3'd it. Uh, and also, gotta say, Renekton, given what Niles did on that pick last game, gotta figure that's gonna be up in priority a little bit more. But I imagine that Maryville will actually go for a counter pick for Niles. So whether it's picked in first rotation is still oh. to be decided by Disguised, it's who lock burn. in the Ivern, baby. We got Daisy on the rift. All right. Well, I've been hearing that you could have Lane Vern as well. So this is tactically a flex, even though we expect oh. it to go in the jungle. Uh, whereas Niles is going to hover the Quinn and likely... Don't tell me it's Static Shiv Ivern. <sighs> no, it, it's Nasher's Tooth. It's actually really good. Uh, and Daisy hits like a brick. Necessarily... Yeah mean you can't go shiv too but all right let's see let's see what it actually turns into niles doing yep. the mind game okay no we actually have a blind pick for niles wow yep. renekton a lot of top laners feel like renekton is just the strongest pick on the patch as you get push again some of the small changes to renekton have added up players are uh, taking him back in the top lane brings a lot of consistency and stability in that top lane which now is used to great success when he was on the blue side last game is again maryville uh, if you were walking in here, Maryville just got done clapping Disguised. Uh, it was 17 to 1. It yeah. was that one kill away from being a perfect game for Maryville, and Disguised looking to bounce back. So, uh, a very different identity already, though, with the Ivern. Uh, definitely already playing for uh, later stages, uh, as Ivern does need a couple items to get going, and Maryville sees that and says, we want to play early game, as Renekton Annie, very early game focused. Very different pick for Get Back, though. This is not the same as the LeBlanc. They can go the Shiv, shove a wave, quickly get on the map. Takes Annie a little bit longer to set up the wave and then get onto the map. You also have to manage your resource bar of your passive stun if you want to shove the wave and immediately make a play. So we'll see if Get Back is able to pilot this to the same success. I'm expecting it to be a little bit slower pace as opposed to just diving top lane between turrets by about six minutes into the game. But let's see what this guy's want to answer with as Rel's locked in. Do they pair it with their bot lane right here and now, or do they counter the Renekton they go with the Kennen. okay all right older counter in the top side for fake god but it will be his Kennen, as that will bring some magic damage and give young the opportunity to maybe play an 80 mid banner into annie no yeah, true you have the ap from Kennen, and if ivern is going for that build then you have a decent amount of ap from him as well we get the alistair versus the rel i'm pretty excited for this new patch for this new meta if these are the supports we're getting this always means that we have more engaged potential as opposed to things like the melio versus yumi handshake where it's all about just this news fest and then keeping your carry alive it's a little more cutthroat when these kinds of supports are i actually would have loved an Aphelios there and then trying to find Aphelios Janna later. I think that Janna would have been really... Oh. Janna's being really slept on right now, especially into Rel. Yeah, uh, I suppose. And you can blow away Kennen too, by pressing R. Get that ultimate out. Uh, hmm. So, some options. But hey, Alistar, you still have the pull to kick Kennen out too. So, Ali will get some good value, but a lot harder to play into Ivern and Daisy, who... Uh, it, let's say, it's not Ivern buffs, it's Daisy buffs, as you said earlier, coming in Kangas. So, Daisy... Will be back in quite the bunch and makes uh, the front line rather difficult in these fights. So between Kennen and Daisy, it's a really good front line with a lot of CC already for Disguise. And they're just looking to find some good carries around it. Ban away the Aurelia and the Tristana, yeah, the 280. interestingly enough. It's the 280 mid laners that Young can play. That's a good point. I haven't yeah. been thinking about it through that lens, but that that's a very heads up ban from MU at that point. 
I think Trist ban's really good. Uh, like, Trist into Renekton, Alistar, Annie, you are just free firing with a Kraken Slayer. Uh, yeah. I feel damn good in those champions. So I, I think that's a worthy ban, whereas Jungle Pool going to be narrowed, so giving uh, Ivern a little bit more protection, I must say. Kindred is an option here uh, for Odd Orange if he wants to play it. Usually not his forte, but uh, could be something that is rather deadly. Uh, as Zaya sees all that CC, and Scary Jerry's like, you know what? We're gonna think about Zaya. We're gonna think about it. Uh, still think about a Zaya. different one instead. There's a di two different philosophies here. Do you go in with the rest of your team because they have the Renekton, Annie, Alistair, or do you kite back to go for Scary Jerry back on the Aphelios? And that means that Meech will instead grab the Zaya because, hey, guess what? That ultimate works both ways. It's still very good into the comp that MU have drafted. I think that self pill is good. And here comes the Silas into mm. the Annie. So I will say, kind of a triple magic damage topside for the side of the skies. It is a little bit dangerous yeah. uh, playing into Maryville. And now it's just on Auto Orange to see what he wants to find. But Silas into Annie. It's a matchup that uh, Chovy played. So now other mid laners are starting to play it. And I, I wish that that wasn't full explanation, but that's it. Is. <laughs> That's your entire breakdown of this matchup. Yeah. Okay, well, let's see what Auto Orange wants to pilot because the Kindred yeah. was still up and is locked in now. You said it yourself. Not necessarily something that we think of when we talk about Auto Orange and his style in the jungle, but it is still good in the meta, and it does kind of fit what their composition... Uh, well, it doesn't fit what their composition wants to do. Now that I think about it again, I'm not actually entirely convinced, other than the fact that you should theoretically be able to get the better of this Ivern early on. Uh, plan for Odd Orange is going to be get red buff and go walk in and find Ivern. And yeah. he has the push to support that in his lane. So uh, really curious to see how Disguise is able to protect Tomio in the first clear as Maryville have the tools to actually go invade and support Odd Orange with his Kindred, which can be very deadly. And we saw what Niles was able to do in the matchup against Malphite. Very different now against the Kennen, though. I think it is important to bring our attention back to that, as it was some of the first picks locked in. I think could be some of the most impactful. Niles uh, was just bodying in the lane, proxy farming. Way harder to do that now that you're in the ranged matchup here. So fake out on something with a little more agency early on. Maybe we'll see that confidence come through that he showed us in his interview with me and Joshi earlier on in the week what you got fake god let's see it now uh also worth noting that this is a silas where an alistar is in the game kangas that's, that's all i'm gonna say yeah uh i think the twitch chat and everybody else can collectively come to their own decisions on if that's good or not it's it's uh it's really broken yeah Alistar Ultimate was not really designed to go onto a AP burst slash bruiser <laughs> who can dive a back line and uh, kind of one-shot them. My eyes are on Young this game. I, I, I think Young is fantastic on melees and playmakers. Silas was one of his best champions. And Young, someone that... Oh, we had a focus on Young and get back early in this one in the pregame, Kangas, as each mid laner... Definitely two aggressive players that we have who have had their moments, both good and bad. Uh, Get Back had a really nice game one as uh, he got one gank from Auto Orange and was able to run the lane from there. And now uh, we're going to try and see what Young can do with the Silas. I think that Young has a lot of tools at his disposal to be successful this game. Uh, between dropping Tibbers, not a bad option, but also, most importantly, that Alistar ultimate is... Man... <laughs> I want to use the bleep button when talking about what it feels like facing uh, <laughs> Silas with an Alistar ult on him. I mean, you have it right there. You might as well go for it. But uh, okay. we're going we're to save it for later. It's, I respect your reservation. It's painful. It is quite painful. And setting up Young for success, you're also setting him up for the expectation, the pressure of this player. Ooh. One of the two new members to this roster from the Cloud9 Championship run in spring. A lot of eyes have been on Young and a lot of questions of... How is he going to step up into the team? How is he going to slot in with everybody else? It's a lot of pressure for a player to have, uh, especially when you're on one of the orgs that is getting the most viewership just based on the hype around Disguised being in you know, the Challengers League now. So let's see if Young's able to live up to the pressure. Nice trade there from Niles as Young will be under this tower early in this matchup. Uh, you do get shoved in. And Annie... Let's have that range and the ability to harass the Silas, but Silas with doubles will be okay. As at the moment, Tomio, he's actually prepped his bot side camps, but has picked up the top side. 
and has been uh, making a very early visit into Niles. Oh, He's in Z. Niles in oh, trouble. Oh, that's really rough for Niles now. We'll look to turn onto Fake Guy, try and get the kill onto the cannon. Locks down, Sun in place. First blood to Fake Guy. Good read from Tomio, and his bot camps cannot get invaded by this kindred as bot had push for the side of disguise who actually enabled Zazel now to walk mid so already a much better start for the side of disguise to have been able to protect tomio a little bit early and actually tomio is even going to make this Blake three so if this yeah. q connects it's deadly it's deadly flash from zazel flash answer oh get back is able to avoid the initial engage from zazel even if tomio lands his so that's two for one flashes burn disguise commit both We'll play from get back as if he goes down there, this map gets really hard for the side of MU. Again, Maryville, a lot of early game in this composition. Uh, Kindred and Aphelios later will be strong, uh, but they don't have that Milio to buff them up. So not like that super OP combo that we have been seeing. And Ivern scales in a very different and unique way, Kangas, which is uh, you just make sure that no one on your team can really die. Yeah, you basically provide a free tank for your team that uh, does not count as kills to the enemy team. You can just walk up at them, provide CC, and you also just give a lot of tools to keep everybody alive. Obviously, the shield is the big one, the root as well, but the most annoying one for me has always Daisy. just been that the, the brush that you dropped down. Oh man, it, it's Daisy after this new patch. Daisy is uh, Daisy is really strong. We're going to see Daisy versus Tabers, actually. That, that could be some fun wars Ooh. that we have on the Rift. I feel like Daisy absolutely wins that these days. I remember that being like a big... Uh, thumbnail kind of gotcha type video uh, back when Ivern was coming out. It's like, oh, who wins the fight? Is it Yorick Colt? Is it is it Tibbers? Is it Daisy? And now it's like, nah, Daisy's uh, been hitting the gym <laughs> lately. Oh, man. Well, whatever the, uh, I guess, jungle camp equivalent is. Daisy's technically one of like the red buff, blue buff things, right? What? I think Daisy's like the same type of, I don't know, whatever rock monster the red buff and blue buff are. Man, I don't know, Lore. Uh, it's whatever. As <laughs> you just did that's, not care uh, about that at all. I respect it. That's that's, all right. uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's that's how that's kind of how I feel. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, when it comes to that. Ooh. See, that's another reason why the brush is at low key the most oppressive thing in the Ivern kit. I know Daisy got buffed. It is Daisy. That's a correct answer. But uh, out of the other abilities, I feel like the brush is slept on into what it actually provides for the team and how annoying it can be. Not only does it deny vision from your opponent, but it also can give you vision, checking things like that. So they'll push back Niles yet again. Now Maryville on the other side of the map because they know Ivern was up there. They will start up the dragon. Should be all theirs. So good job from Mod Orange to cash in. Again, I think it's very important that uh, Kendra is able to invade Ivern, which has not been able to happen yet, but Mod Orange is doing pretty well when it comes to the CS department. Uh... Props to Tomio and Fake God. They actually littered the topside jungle with some wards, and it will enable Tomio to at least get one camp away. We got a reset coming in from Get Back. It's level six, can purchase for the first time, and teleport back into the lane. Young went for an earlier back, an earlier purchase. Let's see if this gives Get Back a big advantage. That is the competed. Um, so we have the extra mana sustain, a little bit of mana himself as Tomio jumps in. Odd Orange is in the neighborhood, though. Tomio just got chunked down. Oh, Young. We still have Tibbers for get back. He can still look for this onto Tomio. And oh. Young stole away the Lambser Spike. Keeps his jungler Tomio. alive, saving the play. Young is being the hero already. Saves Tomio from the clutches of death. Great play from Young. Heads up to grab that Lamb's Respite as... I think Tomio living there is important. It will be the crab going over to the Kindred. But at least Tomio is able to stay on the map and can clean up his bot side jungle right before this Rift Herald, uh, where he will have to reset. So, really clutch by Young there. Uh, and I, I, Young will be under pressure now. He does have to get off a recall before this Rift. And Rift is a fight that I don't know if Disguise can take if Young isn't able to grab all. Now, if Young can get Alistar ultimate... That's good. And I think Maryville has to try and execute Herald with three so that Alistar doesn't have to roam up and give Young the opportunity to grab that because if Young's able to pick up Alley Ultimate, I don't know how Mar Maryville can kill him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it'll be very tricky, so... It will be a little oh. tough. Yeah. As he's also getting a reset off right now. And there we go. He's getting yeah, he his own that. items completed, too. So that, that's step one for any uh, hope for Disguise to lock down this Rift Herald uh, as... See if the uh, 3v3 is able to be found. 
Tomio benefiting from that Ivern change, where if the shield isn't diminished uh, and no enemies are hit by the detonation, you actually get uh, a shield refresh mm -hmm. uh, if it hasn't been broken. So, or I should say, yeah, it's renewed. Not bad. So. Double shields, essentially, you can hold these waves for quite a while. Gets Young back in the lane, shove it out, and now Disguised are the first ones on the Herald. You said MU, if they contest, don't have Alistair come. Looks like they're just not going to contest at all. This is on Vision, yep. but they do not have enough members in the area. Get back just got Tibbers back, but... Uh, yeah, I think it's 2-8. Psycho oh, showing. Young, Young has ult. If Young, again, if Young gets Ali ult, this is, this right is bad. He's right here on the flank. Is he going to pull it? He does. That's going to be a very scary Silas. Don't believe he's even popped it yet. They're just committing to the play. Yep. Flashes in onto Zyko. Locked down the Alistair. Lambs just fight from Otto Orange. Will keep him alive as Niles shows up with the Dominus. But Fate guts here on the flank. So Niles has to watch him. Zyko is limping away as Gimpak is now the target. Nobody is going down but Daisy. Continues the charge. Silas that crazy, is, nobody falls. Silas is so freaking strong. You have Alistar all plus Ivern shields. No one can move this guy. Young just ah. is going to be able to brawl the entire game on the Silas. This is going to be a ridiculous setup for Young. I, I really hope we can see Young pop off on the Silas. It is nasty. He has all the tools at his disposal. You just have the dream Silas game, this game, Kangas. I was watching Niles pushing back Fake God there, but the whole time Young was in the thick of it. Never left the fight. And even though nobody goes down, it's still Harold picked up for DSG. They're happy with that one. You can say that they walked away the victors as Fake God flashed, stunned up by Niles. And with Odd Orange here, he cannot trade Boy. one back. That's a kill over to MU. Actually, really well done by Niles as he got in between the Kennen and uh, the, the Kindred to make sure that any Q that came out from Fake God uh, wouldn't connect. So... Kind of a cute play. Make sure that that went over to the side of Maryville. They find something back on the top side after Harold goes down. But still, it is Disguise. I have a small lead. And Disguise, do I favor in this game moving forward? I, I feel like this comp for MU, once you get Ivern rolling, man, Ivern is so frustrating to deal with. He makes your team so strong. And Silas is going to be immovable as long as you're able to get this Alistar ult. So I, I really think that if Disguise just plays around that timer, it's going to be very tricky for MU to really get into this game. Game one MU, if we go all the way back to how they took this the, the game, it was getting to get back onto the rift, playing around with this LeBlanc, Niles winning in the top lane. Well, two of those key factors have not happened here. Niles is not winning against the Ken, and no surprise. I mean, it is the range matchup. It was the counter pick here for Fake God, but also get back has yet to really get onto the rift, has been kept in here by Young. On this counter pick, Silas DSG counter picking both solo lanes on blue side. Pretty, uh, pretty smooth stuff from them so far, and that means that they even get the herald charge down. More gold plates onto. I believe Young was in range to pick some of that up. Now we're looking at the next dragon. Tommy are not gonna be able to pick that up that crab, but oh, oh. Zazel. Flash from Zazel, hard commit onto Odd Orange. Does not have the Lambs or Spider. We're still down from the earlier scrap. Oh boy. That means a pick over to DSG. Young follows up on the flash, drops the Tibbers himself. And Odd Orange does not quite have, uh, not quite able to get that ultimate off. I don't know if it was available to him or not. Regardless, he falls. Dragon falls over to this guy's, and this guy's continue to make steps in the right direction as this Ivern Silence combo is very nasty already. Uh, you, you can see, once that Q lands from Ivern, it allows everyone else for Disguised, all these melees, to get in range, uh, to interact with Maryville. And on a champion like Rel and Silas, that is also so valuable as Ivern continues to creep back into the meta and is a very strong pick on this patch. We were talking about Odd Orange on the Kindred needing to invade the Ivern, try and get that red buff mm -hmm. get up in his face. Wasn't really able to do much early on. Has a slight lead against the Ivern in the farm department, but... Hasn't put the Ivern super behind. Just the Ivern slower clear speed in general. Has the Shirelias completed. So Tobio's going full support build here. This is not going to be a auto attack on hit damage type build. It's just going to be unable to team even more. Now we have an invade though. As I look at the mini-map, Auto Orange yep. has gone into that top jungle. Young doesn't have that ultimate available yet. So we'll go over to the side of Auto Orange. As we'll, we'll keep track of the Kindred stacks for you. As Auto Orange cruising towards that Trinity Force. Uh, two stacks to his name at the moment. Not able to get in and get that uh, all-important third as he tries to cruise towards the fourth. And 
I still think disguised are in really good shape. I mean, one more Herald in that mid-outer falls. And the strength that the Silas is packing. I just want to see Silas do terrible things this game with Alistar Alt Kangas. The potential's there. What does that even mean? I you're going to see what it means. You're leaving it up to my imagination, which I feel like is way worse than whatever see, it is you're thinking of. You're going to see what it means. There, okay. Let's just say... So that, Silas is going to this game. Back when I was a coach, if we wanted to pick Silas, there were always two picks that we had to be concerned about. Or, or I guess two picks were, if we wanted to pick it, we you always know, had to be concerned about I love story time, Silas. but I feel like we're All about right, to have some action it. here. Yeah, Psycho walks up into the brush, pops the Alistair Ult. Hey, hey, not even enough as the flash away as well. I don't want to actually get a lot of damage as we have the teleports coming in from both the top laners. Fake out gets here first. The cannon oh, slicing Maelstrom could be They're huge, right but they got Young. Finally takes Whoa. him down. Slicing Maelstrom on a three as Fake God will help turn the play. Scary Jerrigan 1v1 by Meech on the side. Trades AD carry for top laner, but Niles still very healthy here. Could be the difference maker. Get back has the anti stun set up. X flash from Zazel. Meech trying to front line here. And MU will back away for now. Ooh, we were just fighting over nothing. There was no dragon. There was no big herald spawn yet. We just wanted a scrap in the jungle. Every ult used in that scrap, too, as uh, Young, the, the Alistar ult, it ran out a, a little soon. Uh, uh oh. As, oh, hold on. Good read from Young here, realizing Odd Orange would want the stack. Teleports Oops. in and gets the kill. Easy one on the side of Kindred. Young continues to be, I, I think, the big piece of this game. Uh, that fight was very close to being very much disguised favor. Odd Orange was barely able to get the ultimate off, as we're going to take a second look. Uh, Young, yeah, goes in. He gets stunned up. Didn't have the Alistar ult quite yet, so we actually took a lot of damage early from the Annie. And then you can see MU doing a nice job of kiting out the Alistar ult on the Silas. So when they re-engage, it's expired, and Young actually blows up. Fake God tries to save him but wasn't able to get Odd Orange down in time as the Lancer's fight comes out just barely in time to make sure that MU was able to find the kill uh, onto Fake God. And uh, Scary Jerry just got absolutely blasted by Meech. Scary Jerry opting for the cleanse instead of the Ghost. So he's not able to kite away from Meech. He's able to run him down. Gold lead now for Disguised is growing slightly after that play. Like I had said earlier, though, there's no big objective taken afterwards, just the other kill cleaned up onto Odd Orange after that replay happened. Now we're back to live, though, and Dragon will be up in a minute, 10 seconds time. Right. Start to see them set up for this again. Ooh, Root lands onto Odd Orange, still no lamps for Spite, but they have get back here. Tomio has flash, to flash yeah. over the Dragon Wall. All right, back to story time. There were two okay. champs where if we wanted to play them, back when I coached, Silas was banned. His champs were Malphite and Alistar. That's why we see them primarily picked on five. Uh, on red side in this meta, as you have to wait to make sure that Silas is not seen. You get to play Silas in Malphite, it is the most... It is one of the easiest matchups to win. You just literally maul Malphite, and you win for free. It's great. Even up into the top lane, we've been seeing things like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, Even it's good. It's good. The, the Silas around wherever the Malphite ends up going. Alistair feels great as well as Niles. We'll pop the Dominus. We have an engaged bot lane. Zazel taking a lot of damage to start off here. Big for the recall from Meech, but Odd Orange Meech. is on the hunt. They've cleared the wave, though, so disguised, they survive this. Get back's coming. Meanwhile, top side, we did have a Fake God walk up there to support the play. Uh, so they did take that top turret. We'll drop the Rift Herald, try and get a crash into the inner, which will force out a TP actually coming in from Get Back, who does have that ultimate. And yeah, Niles used the Dominus to try and clear the wave. But with too many members of Disguised up there to force him off, it didn't matter. So that's a teleport down from MU just to keep their tier two turret alive. With everyone showing up there, though, for the side of Disguise, will be a free dragon going over to MU. It is just a console. Uh, I, I think that that is a decent pick for each of our teams. Uh, but no, nothing that's going to force as much fighting or priority as a mountain or a hex tech. But Zazel is actually going to get here in time. Hex flash over the wall, start taking this up. These guys were able to walk down, and we'll see if they actually have the guts to stick this out. Ivern can keep everyone topped off. Yeah, three members of this guy shows top, but that was a teleport from get back top lane, so disguise rotate on the map. Kindred can't take it fast enough, so oh. it's actually a bully oh. of Maryville off of that objective. Disguise pick uh -oh. it up as Young. Uh oh. Well, he can grab Alistar. Like if I'm Zyko, I actually don't Ooh. even want to get involved here. Okay, he is staying well behind. Waits yeah. for the Lamster Spider. Now, now Zyko can go in. 
Young's just gonna buy time, but will go down here. Actually flashes to safety under the turret. Odd Orange continues to follow up and will get the kill. Teleport in now. Oh, Dazel's here. He's stopping it. Oh, the headbutt pushes him away. Now Fake God jumping in on the Odd Orange. They know that Lambert's fight is still available for this Kindred as it does go down. But these guys after. have everybody here. Slicey Maelstrom locking them down. Psycho, Psycho actually headbutts more. And massive pulverize. Scary Jerry joined in on the fight. Maryville can turn this. Disguise took too long. And Maryville group up themselves. They'll continue the dive on a Fake God underneath the turret. Moonlight Vigil goes a little wide. One member survives. But four are claimed for Maryville. They'll take that trade. MVP of that fight was all Zyko. His Alistar was huge, starting with not getting in range to give Young his ultimate. And then look what he ends up doing on the back half of this fight, Kangas. As first off, he keeps Zazel out. Then he's able to actually cancel part of the W. So yeah, Miles is tagged off. But watch how he uses this next set of sums. So yeah. first off, he's going to exhaust Fake God. Make sure he can't oh. move. Pulls him out to save Odd Orange, and then it's the Q flash. Gets three. Niles oh. instantly follows it up with all the AOE. As MU team fighting wonderfully in this one, Kangas. By so much time for Scary Jerry, disguise were fully committed to the play. They were fully wow. confident that they could take it. But Alistair spacing, man. Keeping everybody alive, keeping everybody in a very comfortable position against their opponents. Now Disguise on the back foot here. That's a slight old lead to Maryville, but it was about a 2,000 for Disguise going into that one. They're going to have to find a way back into this game now. That was really, really well done from Psycho. I, one of the fun parts about this patch, no more Enchantress duty for a lot of right. our supports. Good to see some of them stepping up. Psycho quite literally there on the Alistar. Still think a lot of this game will come down to Young. If he is able to get the pulls off of Alistar, uh... Or I should say, take the ultimate from Alistar. Uh, he can start pulverizing the enemy team with that one. As at the moment, to have Maryville looking, maybe to sneak into Fake God. Out of Orange will find Tomio. Get forced out. And Fake God will ramp up the rest of that wave. A little bit of quietness on the Rift here, Kangas. Uh, before we get to the Dragon, I don't expect either of these teams to burn down Baron. Uh, even though uh, Maryville, pretty good damage onto the Baron with the Kindred plus the Athelios that they so choose. And even Leandri's burn stacking on top as well. So there, there's a few things they can look to do. Ooh, Zazel. Ooh, oh. almost got Zyko there. There was oh. nobody nearby to help him out. All right. Well, Lucky cow. He's, he's chilling. He avoids the slaughterhouse there. Mm -hmm. You, in fact, still cannot milk those. So Zyko gets out of that one just fine. Back onto the rift, linking up with Odd Orange here, passing to the bottom side. You mentioned Dragon, not Baron. Seems like the teams are on the same page here. Minute and a half until it's up, so this is where we start to see the initial setup from teams. Mary will get to the river first, and will control the access points. And I think I got that wave in pretty deep top. No one's going to show up to eat that uh, from the side of MU. If Fake God were to actually stick up around there... He would be able to maybe take down an inner turret, which would be a nice little gold injection for Disguise before this next fight. But guys, we're at the fourth dragon. This game is dead on even. As oh, interesting. Zazel can tank this up pretty well, especially with the Ivern shields. That might have given it away. Ever. Wait, they don't have a blue trinket. They can't get in. This is gone. This is actually gone. Wow. Disguised oh, no. with a very creative Baron call there. Everyone was setting up for Dragon. Maryville committed their wards down there, so this guy said, all right, well, let's just go up and get a Turo Baron buff for ourselves. Man, it was all going pretty well for Maryville. That's just, <laughs> uh, just, just, a, just an oopsie, just a lapse. That's why, uh, you know, gotta answer those top waves. The, someone went, wait, that didn't end up working out. Now Young has the Baron buff here as Get Back tries to push him away. But Young with Baron buff can walk right back in and try and start the siege back onto this turret. Even with Tomio wrapping around, Get Back plays actually very safe. Do we Why? get the Daisy versus Timbers? Are we going to see it? Look, they're on the same screen. They're going to smack each other. Yeah! Oh, he smited it. No, oh, okay. A little anticlimactic. Oh. There's uh, no more Daisy for the moment here for the side of Tomio. We're going to have a TP in, though, from Disguise. They're actually ignoring the dragon. Just want to play for the turret and the gold. And are going to fall. Disguise sticking to the lanes. As long as they have Baron. 
Thank you, Observers, for highlighting that. There's a, a, a window here where Get Back could look to teleport behind if somebody shows that they're too far out of position, but no, this guy's actually repositioned back towards the mid lane, and we'll get to hey, safety. Look. Or Daisy. They're back. Cupcakes are back, baby. Hey, guy will go catch his bot wave as I fail to yeah. come up with a cupcake joke right there. You set me up for it, and I, you know, I, I, I floundered. It's going to be a lot of gold picked up for disguise, just given uh, how many objectives were standing for them. Uh, a lot of standing gold with that top inner. Now it's going to be the bot outer, and you've got to imagine that with this Baron, they're at least going to get one more inner turret down with a minute left on it. Dragon and the turret is the icing on top as Maryville will trade for the top half of the jungle camps. That's another uh, stack onto Kindred. How many? Are, we're at seven. Okay. Odd Orange has hit the seventh stack. Oh, so that's a lot. two upgrades now. That's a lot. One that inner is falling. Quite a lot, yeah. Bot inner likely to fall too. Does Maryville try to skirmish here now? It's still showing on the top side, but he does have some deep rewards if he wants to get creative here. Ooh, Odd Orange actually gets tagged by that Ivern Q. Niles is committing to the push. Okay. We'll claim one turret now as the rest of the skies keep walking up with this Turo Baron buff. 30 seconds left on it. It can take this inhibitor turret. Otterward jumps over the wall. Oh, just right into his own death. Or at least Lamser's fight being used much earlier than they were hoping. And he still goes down. Ooh, rough look from the jungler there. Jumping over the wall right Young. into everyone from the skies. Now Young has the Alistair ultimate. He is tanking up everything. They cannot kill the silence in, Silas in reply. And now Disguise can continue their work here into the base. Disguise Niles now walks could out. still look as... Oh, oh. engage, fake god. Gets on everybody, slicing Maelstrom onto the back line. Scary Jerry, the last carry left alive. He's got red white, he's in a good spot here. Flashes to safety, has the cleanse, but does he have the health bar? Meech is in there, and Meech will shut him down. Disguise claim their revenge here, as they will win a fight in MU's base, but Odd Orange is actually back onto the rift. Are you kidding me? Ooh, even Young stealing away the Lambs of Spike cannot keep is Jungler alive, so Disguise will just have to walk away with two inhibitors, and that is that. Kind of an awkward fight here, Kangas. <laughs> it started with uh, Kidder falling, then Young tanked up like a bunch of alts. He went Zanya's Tibbers. Uh, check out the Zanya's from Young. He goes Golden. Actually dodges out on Tibbers after this. That gets dropped. Really well done. That's a lot. Time where he was able to live. Fake God takes down, get back. Rubik's off. He gives himself for that, but a good bounce back. From Disguise in the back half of this is Zazel. Actually able to jump on in. Sacks himself a scary jury this time of the game. That is well worth it. And then Tomio. Just, uh, yeah, okay, we're not going to watch him having too much fun. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, supportive Ivern. A little bit too supportive of MU there instead of Disguise. Uh -oh. So Zazel, he could be in trouble. Death brush. Oh, they don't, they don't pull the trigger. They must not have had vision on anyone else. I mean, if Zazel's I... walking up like that, you don't know if there's an entire team behind him. Psycho didn't have X Flash up quite yet. Uh, um, I think if Psycho has Hex Flash, that's a dead rel. But that not being available, gonna try and set a trap elsewhere as they have yet to be spotted. PSG controlling around the Baron. It's respawning in a minute and 10 seconds. They can play a patient game here. It's not gonna time with the Dragon. So MU can't really threaten to take another objective away from DSG by trading that Baron. Maryville will have to walk up, maybe get Tomio here. Just drops down a little, uh, little brush and will spot out all of MU. Love Ivory, man. <laughs> One more lane to get through as Meech is very... Oh, oh Ooh, boy. Oh, how about a pick an Odd Orange? That's boy. a great way to start an end of a game. Now it's a 5v4 oh, push underneath the base. Zazel just goes for the dive. Niles. Taking up a lot. Get back does good damage, but it's answered in reply by Meech, who has so far taken down more members. Zyko goes down too. It's only the carries left alive for MU. Okay. Well, disguise the dog pile on MU. A little bit too good. Auto Orange goes down again. Had the lead. Wasn't able to use it. As oh, that's oh, oh, oh my baby. lord. Oh yeah, my lord. Yeah, Big God's playing a little mad right now, saying, "Hey, they made a whole video about me. I gotta show up." In this game, we'll claim a kill right there. Very clean game two from Disguise, splitting another series, but feeling good ending this one with a win.
Hey, we just signed the win game two to get the interview, right? Exactly. We never get to talk to them because it's usually game one they pick up, and game two is somehow it gets away from them. This Strategic. time, yeah, you know, swapping things up for us. Props to Young. Uh, I think that Young empowered on the Silas. That was a good Silas game. Alistar was showing. Uh, you get Alley ult. Uh, uh, you really don't need any other alts. You can trade Tibbers with Annie. I think Silas into Annie is a matchup that I actually want to see more of uh, when it comes to Annie being selected. I think Silas is a good option, especially when you pair up with something like an Ivern. And Young was able to push his limits quite a bit, sometimes a little bit too much, but still, uh, he was quite the menace on the Silas this game. Yeah, I, I mean, we set him up for being the main character of that game, and I'm happy he was able to deliver. Yeah. Uh, there was that one kind of rough play in the bot lane where, you know, like we said, Zyko played it incredibly well, and they yeah. were able to catch Young at the end there. But in general, Young was able to find those Alistair ultimates and survive very, very long in those siege fights. Uh, so, yeah, props to Disguise for, you know, turning things around, winning that game number two. Any final points before we send it to a short break here, though, Cubby? Sound like you wanted to hop in there. No, I, I mean, I think I set up a lot of Young for being that playmaker, but props to Meech. Uh, Meech was massive yes. that game. He found the solo kill on the Scary Jerry, uh, and then that's Zaya. With everything being so hectic between the cannon and the Silas that was buffed up by the Alistar, just a lot for Meech to free fire this entire game. He made really good use of that. Yeah, impressive play from multiple members from the side of this guy. With that yeah. said, we're going to send it to a short break before Sierra is back with one of the victorious members to chat about how they won that game. We'll see you there. The LCS Challengers League is brought to you by Turo, the world's largest car sharing marketplace. Find your drive. Welcome to our Verizon post game interview and welcome Meet from Disguise broadcast. Congratulations on winning the second game, especially to you had a great second game there. How are you feeling about that win and just heading into week three? Um, definitely feeling pretty good, honestly, I'd say about the win. I mean, obviously, 1 1 is not the best result, but it is what it is, so yeah. May not be the best result, but it's one that Disguise seems to be racking up a couple times, almost like the team's curse with these ties over and over. Normally it's winning the second, the first and then dropping the second. So we don't get to talk to you guys too often. Why do you think it is that we're seeing these ties over and over? Um, I'm not too sure, but I think maybe after we win one, we get too overconfident or we just come in not prepared for game one. So I think that's probably the reason. It's a lot of sense, especially to we all know that this roster has what it takes. You have some really, really strong members on the team. We haven't quite gotten to see that fully with the results. Is there going into this? Is it just that maybe some of the competition's a little bit more harder or is it just every piece of the team still coming together? What's kind of been that missing ingredient so far? Um, I definitely think the competition, the split is worse. So I wouldn't say it's that compared to last, but um, yeah, I think we still need to come together and just kind of figure out our team identity and what we want to do, honestly. And then speaking of that identity, I mean, a core part of this team's coming from this Cloud9 roster. Now, that identity of the team under disguise going on forward, do you find that for yourself, it's trying to figure out molding into these old C9 strategies, or is it just everything's being rebuilt and just hasn't quite clicked yet? Mm, I think we're kind of just rebuilding everything. I mean, I don't know how it was on C9, so it's hard for me to say, but I'd say more the latter because we, we do have two different players and kind of two key roles, so yeah. Sense, but at least that second game victory, fingers crossed going on ahead that things will be clicking it pretty good, especially to tomorrow you're going up against Fear. So I'm curious your thoughts going into that matchup, how you're feeling about it? Um, I think they were definitely good last split, or they were surprising, but I'm not too sure about this one, so I guess we'll see. We'll see how it all shakes up tomorrow, but thank you for your time. Congratulations again on that second game win. Before I let you go, do you have any final words or any shoutouts? Um, shout out Disguise Toast and uh, for hosting and fielding the roster, obviously, and shout out um, my team and our coach. Um, anyways, best of luck going on for the rest of the week, Meech, and have yourself a good rest of your night, okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah. As for us, Hi, our Meech. night is 
wrapping up. Well, I say night, but it kind of still seems like day. The sun's still shining outside. Yeah, not quite. Not quite used to this. Uh, our, our teams were kind of speed running a little bit here. Hey, might have time to go get a ride, you know, somewhere. Who knows? Oh, yes, yes, a ride. As uh, if if you're looking for a ride yourself, I ride a motorcycle, so I, I need access to a car sometimes. I wonder if there's anything I can do uh, for that. Maybe we'll talk about that later, though. Mm. Yeah, Who knows? Maybe we'll, we'll sit and we'll think about that a little bit. Um, while we think about how you can maybe find yourself a cool car we rent, you know, we'll pull out of our NACL standings, kind of reflect on this, of course. Over at the LCS Underscore Challengers broadcast, there is still matches going on by. And uh, whew, that lead TLC is taking is uh, even bigger than when we last saw it. What's going on over yeah. there? They're now a full series distance away from the next highest team, FlyQuest, yet to join the double digit wins as they will split another series here. So after seven days, of competition with all these best of twos. Team Liquid are still the only team with double digit wins. Very impressive stuff coming in from them. With a big 2-0 over Wildcard today as well, who were very or tied for second in the standings to start things off. So uh, TLC continue to make space between them and the rest of the competition. But it was good to see a couple of splits like Supernova and Maryville were two teams that I had lower in my tier list coming into the season. And I think each team's had good showings in their wins today as they uh, split series against teams that I consider to be stronger than them coming into the season. So good to see some strength from teams uh, at the bottom of our standings as I think everyone continues to continu or continues to level up as this season continues. And now AOE is going to have the pressure on them because, uh, you know, I, last week was so rough. They had a whole situation where Link's uh, power went out yeah. uh, and they had to, you know, have like subs come in. Acadian played jungle, Will played bot lane. So I'll put them <laughs> behind in the standings. I'm That's hoping fun. that they have a big bounce back though this weekend. Hey, hey guys, I think I figured it out. I think I figured out Cubby's his issue is renting a car. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you have a solution for us? I do. So, actually, the LCS Challengers League is brought to you by Toro, the world's largest car sharing marketplace where you can book any car you want for just about any occasion. You can get about your boring car rentals at Toro.com. I actually have to rent a car, like, later next week because I have to go for my full license and Ooh. my car is uh, having issues. So, uh, oh, no. you know, this might be coming in handy for me. Timely, timely partner for us to bring <laughs> out of the show then. You know, <laughs> call up Tura, see if they can help you out with anything. Could get a lot, but uh, hey, we got some matches over the other channel to watch, so we'll cut this off. Of course, make sure to use that hashtag NACL over on Twitter. Let us know what you think of our matches today and as well, the matches that we got going on tomorrow because it's exciting stuff. And smack that subscribe button. If you want some of the cool emotes that there is around on Twitch and of course to help support our players and our teams. Thank you so much for supporting today by coming out and tuning in. We hope to see you over on the other channel and we hope you all have a great rest of your night.